we're tired of dealing with just the this. Just it's a lot of this. back and forth. It's yes. like two dogs on the chain right. that just never get off. And, and look at the people. We <laughs> never the people get off. Just waiting. Yeah, we're like just we, waiting. We got a whole lot of ideas, and we vote, and we do all this other stuff. Right. We go to these panels. We talk. We speak. Can we get better? I feel like that's all we need is just to get better. What's good, y'all? It's, it's the Dumashets React, and, and we're, we're back, back with another, another video. video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American Reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on, on the road, road to 100K. 100 K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Greetings on the factors, my name is Sam, and today we're jetting off to the very south of Africa. To, uh, so well, yeah. Yeah. South, south Africa. Yes, I know, what lucky ducks we are. It's got sun, it's got sea, it's got a big hole with a completely different country nestled right within it. Yes, it's the Donut of Nations. <laughs> I mean, what an accolade, I'm well gel, as the kids say. Britain looks more like a rapidly disintegrating biscuit that you've just dropped in your tea. <sighs> Fitting, really. Anyway, what amazing medical feat was first carried out in South Africa? Which famous South African has six different names? And can someone teach me the accent? I kind of love the accent and want to have the accent. <laughs> Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so grab yourself some biltong, check out some beautiful South African wildlife, and for the love of God, put down that viruzela so you can actually hear me in 101 Facts About South Africa. Number one. First question first, what is South Africa? Well, it's a country. Right. Not a region. Right. Well, it's a region. Well, yeah. South of the most country, actually, in the continent of, well, Africa. It's also officially known as the Republic of South Africa, or RSA. Well, know that. -da. Number two. While it's bragging about itself, its coastline also stretches across two oceans, the South Atlantic and Indian. That's because it's actually pretty large, with a coastline of 2,798 kilometers, or around 1,739 miles. That's also, by the way, 27,545,760 human tongues long. I don't know why I have that frame of reference Wh either. What? Number three. Okay. All around it, you've got countries like Namibia, Botswana, mm -hmm. and Zimbabwe to the north, and Mozambique and Swaziland to the east. But also, like a big donut, it has a country right in its middle, too. The yeah, enclaved country the of Lesotho. Lesotho. Yeah, yeah. Number four. Much like many other countries on Earth, South Africa is absolutely jammed, packed to the gills with history. Lots and lots of juicy history. History is so boring! In fact, if you're partial to digging and history, you'll love South Africa because of its fossil hominid sites, within which lots of, you guessed it, fossils it. have been on Earth, showing some of mankind's earliest activity. Number five. In fact, these areas of paleoanthropological intrigue are UNESCO World Heritage Sites and are also known as the Cradle of Humankind. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that an Angelina Jolie Lara Croft film? Number six. Lara Croft Tomb Raider The Cradle of Life was released in 2003 from director Jan de Bont. Uh, oh no, wait, sorry, I got sidetracked, didn't I? Anyway, fossils that have been found in the Cradle of Humankind, like bones from various hominid species from 4.5 to 2.5 million years ago, support the idea that modern humans all originate from Africa. These Ooh. fossils were found in caves in the Cradle of Humankind, technically called the Sturkfontein Caves, along with evidence that 2 million years ago, us older humans used stone tools as well. Number seven. Modern humans, or Homo sapiens, have inhabited South Africa for at least 170,000 years. When us Europeans came a-knocking, the dominant ethnic group were that of the Bantu-speaking peoples, who had migrated to parts of what's now South Africa from other parts of the continent. Previously, there had been Khoikhoi Khoi and San peoples living there, but they were seemingly displaced by Bantu speakers. Number eight. In case you were wondering, by the way, the first European adventure to land in South Africa was in 1487, led by Portuguese explorer Bartholomew Diaz. Diaz sailed down to Wolfish Bay, now known as Walvis Bay in Namibia, which isn't South Africa, I know, I know, but we'll get there with Diaz, okay? Number 9. A, long time a bit ago. later on, in January 1488 actually, Diaz went down the western coast of South Africa. He then went past the southernmost point of Africa without actually seeing it, which is quite some feat when you think about it, and then back up again along the east coast. He then reached what he called the Rio de Infante, which we now know as the Groot River, a massive yeah. river Groot. in eastern South Africa. I am Groot River. Number 10. 
However, by the early 17th century, Portugal's maritime power was declining, and other over European colonists like the UK and the Netherlands were itching to grab a chunk of Africa's southern lobe for themselves. After several minor expeditions to the region in the preceding decades, in 1652, the Dutch East India Company landed the first European settlers on the Cape of Good Hope, launching a colony that, by the end of the 18th century, numbered only 15,000. Number 11. In fact, in 1795, they tried to establish a republic, also known as pulling the reverse Palpatine. They spoke a variant of Dutch dialect known as Afrikaans, and were known as either Boers or Afrikaners. In fact, Afrikaans is still spoken in South Africa to this very day. Number 12. There was a bit of a push and tug over this new colony in South Africa known as the Cape Colony. In 1795, for instance, the British occupied it after the Battle of Mützenberg. Then in 1802, the Dutch got it back with an agreement called the Peace of Amiens. Then in 1806, the British nabbed it again after the Battle of Blorberg. Then the Dutch kind of just gave up and said the colony was part of the British Empire. Number 13. It was also around this time that the Zulu Kingdom came about. Formed by Shaka Zulu in 1816, this became an incredibly powerful nation in South Africa, even going to war with the British in 1879, though that was instigated mainly by one uppity upper class Brit dick called Sir Henry Bartlefrey, who you oh, know wow. that's uh, Now, okay. Instigated. It's like, I feel like everybody knows Shaka Zulu, but they don't know what his tribe did. Like, they know what he did, it's just not talked about as much. They highlight him and they don't go into, like, that's another level of detail that can be added into the conversation. Right, right. That will kind of give a little more understanding of who he was and what he did. Right, they'll go straight into how he died. That's it. Like, they'll say, oh, this great warrior, who passed, how he died. Who passed at this time? Of the, <laughs> who the, 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 passed the, away? Yeah, I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, maybe we should dig into that a little bit more. We decided to start the Anglo-Zulu War without the approval of the British government. What a knob. Number 14. Frere started the war he so desperately wanted by sending an ultimatum to Ketchwayo, the king of Zululand. The ultimatum was deliberately designed to be impossible to satisfy, requiring the Zulus to dismantle their military system within 30 days and pay reparations for alleged insults. After their absurd what? demands were predictably not met, the British promptly invaded Zululand, after which the Zulus were eventually defeated in a little under six months. Number 15. Okay. Incidentally, the last major battle of the Anglo-Zulu War was the Battle of Ulundi, which is notable as the first usage of the British Gatling gun. Oh, gotta love us British, eh? <laughs> oh, sorry. Number 16. But wait, there's more! In 1880, the First Boer War began between the Boers and the British. The Boers won and got independence for Transvaal and the Orange Free State. Not to give you any spoilers here, by the way, but notice that it's called the First Boer War. And my oh, yeah. voice broke. Mm -hmm. That's embarrassing. Anyway, yeah, loads of people died. Number 17. In 1886, the inevitable happened. Yes, that's right, gold was discovered in the Witwatersrand Waters-Rand Basin, triggering the appropriately named Witwatersrand Waters-Rand Gold Rush. This directly led to the establishment of the city of Johannesburg, which grew into the largest city in South Africa in less than a decade. Number 18. However, this, in a roundabout way, also led to the Second Boer War, starting in 1899, as a big reservoir of gold is apparently appealing to some people. Not me, I'm all about the personality, baby. One of the reasons this second war started between the Boers and the British Empire was because of this discovery, as Witwaters Rand is right in the middle of Transvaal and the Orange Free State. You know, that thing they were arguing about the first time. Number 19. The Second Boer War ended in 1902, with the British eventually winning with the signing of the Treaty of Vereeniging, which essentially gave Transvaal and the Orange Free State to the Brits. It should also be noted that the British used some frankly horrible tactics to achieve this goal, including the destruction of food supplies and the uses of concentration camps. Yeah, God, we're horrible. Anyway, number 20. In 1910, the Union of South Africa was formed by joining together the former colonies of Natal, Cape Colony, Transvaal and the Orange Free State as a precursor of the Republic to come. Nice. Well, ish. Not really, actually, but yeah, also no. Number 21. A couple of years later, in 1912, the African National Congress was formed, constituting an important moment in the history of South Africa. The ANC was established in retaliation to the injustices that black South Africans were facing at the time, which, by the way, was a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Like, 
a lot. That's crazy. Number 22. Aww. For instance, in 1913, the Natives Land Act was imposed. Now, what was that? Why, that was the law that meant white people couldn't buy land from black farmers and vice versa. Essentially Whoa. preserving the large majority of the land in the newly formed nation of South Africa for the exclusive use of the white minority. Astonishingly, this law was overturned in 1991. Number 23. South Africa... They don't talk about that part. Yeah, that was very... Much so there was a gap between the two races and... There yeah, was no exchange being made. No business was being made. Yeah. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. And, and like, I think of things like that now. You know, like, we deal with racial issues here. Mm -hmm. But I think about, you know, the ethnicities of people we rented for throughout our adulthood life. And it's like, it was half and half. But, like, what if, oh, I couldn't rent that place because of the color of my skin. Like, you know. I don't know. I just be thinking about stuff and, you know, just trying <laughs> to put myself in their shoes sometimes. So, yeah, and I can really. see how hard that would be. Oh, terribly. Very really hard. hard. Man. Eventually became free of its United Kingdom colonial owners in 1934 with the Status of the Union Act. This meant that South Africa was a sovereign, independent state. Okay. Nice one, gang. Number 24. Ah, oh, okay, maybe um, uh, too soon on the nice one there, because in 1948, the National Party enforced a little something called apartheid, an Afrikaans word that translates to separateness, or more literally, apartheid. Apartheid, if you don't already know, was a political and social system that completely segregated white people from non-white people in almost every way, in order to preserve white racial purity and the domination of Afrikaners in the economic and political spheres. Number 25. Apartheid created an authoritarian political culture based on an ideology of white supremacy. The policy affected numerous aspects of daily life, including one's access to public facilities, social events, land ownership, housing and employment opportunities, as well as the all-important right to vote that was denied to non-whites. Even certain beaches were specifically reserved for white people only. Apartheid is especially infamous considering the fact it was introduced at a time when many Western nations were generally moving away from racist policies. Sees. So, like, and you will hear stuff like this and think that it sounds like it's just impossible to get out of this situation. Right. Like, you was cut off from everything, you was pushed to the back, and you was not able to vote concerning your ability to thrive in life. You know? Right. So, it's like, that's just. Hold up, wait, could y'all vote? I think he just mentioned they was not able to vote. Only the whites was able to vote. I want to. I want to play it back. I don't know how far back it was. So let's take a look. let's take a whiff at it. Cause I remember seeing the identification cards that they had to carry. Yeah. I don't know y'all. Like y'all know we did that one video on the part side, and then we was like, uh, uh, we we can't be getting emotional like this. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and we deep. didn't want to touch it anymore. We're going to play it back, though, and see if he said that. But I think I heard him say that you guys wasn't able to vote. Only white people was able to vote. And that's just a, another way of, like, bro, that's, that's tough. Yeah, that's why I, when, you know, the exchange students were having the debates, I'm like, they, they under a policy in their country, and then they come to the United States where we're in the end of our civil rights movement. Well, not civil rights movement. We're in the civil rights movement, but we're at the end of, like, the segregation. Because apartheid was what segregation was in the South. Yeah. Just a, a little bit more extreme, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're going to play it back, We though. try so hard not to comment on the Yeah, we actually try not to. But when he <laughs> said that it was unable to vote, I, wait, I thought it, Let me see if he said yeah. that. I got here. Culture based on an ideology of white supremacy. The policy affected numerous aspects of daily life, including one's access to public facilities, social events, land ownership, housing and employment opportunities, as well as the all-important right to vote that was denied to non-whites. Even oh, certain beaches denied. were specifically okay. reserved for white people only. What Apartheid is especially it was denied. It was denied. So it was denied. It wasn't yeah. able to vote. Yeah. How the heck? And so here... That's crazy. It wasn't That's necessarily crazy. denied. It was... They gave us the runaround. You could be the most educated person with everything that you need to take the, the test. The the It was a test back then, right? Um, no, application, to so fill out the application, and then they would just deny you for no reason. Yeah, you're like, like wasting your time going up there. Right, period. and I feel like that created a stigma of our voices are not heard, the the voting polls are rigged. Mm -hmm. That's why it, it hurts my heart when a lot of, my people, like in the United States, they're like, oh, my voice don't matter anyway. Um, the polls are rigged. I don't care what nobody got to say about nothing. At one point, my relatives could not vote. 
So right. I'm going to vote. I don't care what nobody got to say about no, that. I'm with you on that. I'm, really? I'm with you on that, 100%. Considering the fact it was introduced at a time when many Western nations were generally moving away from racist policies. So, even worse a look, really. Number 26. Apartheid, of course, rightfully inspired considerable protest. The previously mentioned ANC and other groups demonstrated against the policy, which came to an unfortunate head with the Sharpeville massacre on the 21st of March 1960. Thousands of protesters flocked to a police station in Sharpeville, peacefully protesting by demanding they be arrested for not having their passbooks, which the government used to control movement within the country. Though there is disagreement as to the behaviour of the crowd, the police... And see, that's one thing. Our people didn't have to travel with a pass... What do you call it? A passport? Yeah, uh, they was called passports around that time Yeah, well. they didn't have yeah. to travel with a passport, but of course, you know, we have identification cards. ID... Well, so yeah. that's what their passports was, like an yeah. identification card. Yeah. yeah, that's what I would uh, compare it to. But, yeah. It's eventually retaliated by firing at the protesters, wow. leading to the death of 69 people while another 180 were injured. Number 27. As a result of Sharpeville, the ANC was banned by the South African government. Soon after, in 1961, Nelson Mandela formed an offshoot wing of the organisation called yeah. the Spear of the Nation. It may surprise you to learn that Mandela had armed this particular wing, claiming that the armed struggle with the authorities was forced on us by the government. As a result, Mandela was jailed soon after. Number 28. Okay, so this is very random, but what was Nelson Mandela's ethnicity or which tribe that he belonged to? Because to me, he has the eyes of the Khoisan. Khoisan? Like mm -hmm. he have those features of them. Are you okay, it's not and bad. And I've never, I've never looked into that. I and mean, it's that's interesting. Yeah, it's it it's it's interesting that here in the United States, like we learned about him, mm -hmm. but we didn't learn about apartheid. No, nah, and that's crazy. Yeah, they, that's what he was fighting for. Right. So how we learned about him? And, and they never talked about that part. Wow. They just kept saying he threw up in jail. <laughs> like they didn't really for protesting or something, yeah. but they didn't, they never went into detail of like about the protests and what was really going right. on around that time. That's different. It's crazy. Right. We had to that. learn about it like in our adulthood years, you know. Well, not it's really crazy. adulthood, but young adulthood. Like after high school, we had to do it on our own research. Okay, why do we like Nelson Mandela so much? Yeah, and <laughs> a know? few other big names too. It's like, yeah, like we have Manny Mandela, a lot of you yeah, know? a lot of names that um. But their history, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, was cut off. It's like yeah. they have a little small script about it. That's why you're supposed to teach your children yeah. yourself. Don't depend on the school system. Afrikaans started to be introduced into the school system, which the black populace of South Africa disliked as they felt the language resonated with oppression. As a result, the Soweto Uprising occurred in 1976, where 10 to 20,000 black high school children marched in protest. They were met with severe violence from police, resulting in the death of at least 176 people. Ooh, wow, was even Number 29. Yes, in 1990, right. 27 whole years after he was imprisoned, Nelson Mandela was released. Just three years later, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Despite this, though, he was still on US terror watch list until as late as 2008. Number 30. Anyway, back to the 90s for a second. In 1994, apartheid was fully repealed after 50 long years. Why was he on the U.S. terror list? What was the threat to us? I'm going to have to go and watch some stuff. Because his name was in our history books. Right. Like, we, they what talked the about threat? him. So what was the connection? And I do remember when he came here. But what was the threat? I don't know. It probably was about a time when they had other great leaders at mm. around the same time. He could have been networking. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. because what was happening... South then Africa the was the same thing kind of happened in the U.S., mm, you know, so it's like yeah. maybe that was the issue, and they were trying not to let them yeah. join forces. Yeah, like Malcolm X. Like Malcolm X, yeah. yeah. yeah it's okay. Learn something new Black again. South Africans were allowed to vote, and as a result, Nelson Mandela was elected president. Just two years later, hearings about the atrocities that had happened under apartheid took place, and South Africa began to heal. Number 31. On to 2010 now, when the FIFA World Cup was held in South Africa, in 10 stadiums all over the country. This brought with it the majesty of Vuvuzelas, little horn trumpets which annoyed fans around the world with a near constant noise that I managed to forget about for 10 years until now. Thanks, Obama. Oh, snap. Number 32. Today, South Africa is a parliamentary republic with nine provinces. These are Western Cape, Eastern Cape, Zwazulu Natal, Northern Cape, Free State, Northwest, Gauteng, Mpumalanga, and Limpopo. It's important to note that each of these provinces has their own government. Number 33. 
And yet, despite South Africa's status as a democratic republic, it still manages to also have itself a monarchy. In fact, South Africa actually has several monarchies. Okay. This is because the South African constitution includes a little something called the Traditional Leadership Clause, which oh. specifically recognises the region's indigenous mm. leadership practices. For instance, the current king of the Zulu nation, over in the province of Zwazulu Natal, is Goodwill Zwalathini Zabeka Zulu, who currently has six now. wives and 28 children. Woo. Number 34. <laughs> So Amazingly, South Africa has not one, not two, not four, but three capital cities. Which is very different to most countries, which tend to make do with just the one. Still, if we're going to be really pedantic about it, South Africa actually has no legally defined capital at all. It's just that the country's three branches of government are split over different cities. South Africa's legislature is based in Cape Town. Pretoria is the state of the president of the cabinet, while Blomfontein hosts the nation's Supreme Court of Appeal and is considered the judicial capital. Though the Constitutional Court of South Africa is located in Johannesburg. God, who knew capital cities could be so complicated? Number 35. South Africa's national flag is well known around the world for its striking and colourful design. First used on the 27th of April 1994, the day of the country's first not super racist election, the flag was actually only meant to be temporary and numerous other designs were later proposed. However, though. the flag became far more popular than any other submissions, and its status as the South African flag was later made official. Number 36. The South African flag's characteristic V-shape, which converges into a single horizontal green band, symbolises the coming together and joining of the various different groups within South African society and the act of moving ahead together in unity. Though the flag's colours do not officially symbolise anything in particular, the presence of red, white and blue is generally taken to represent... This is crazy though, like, even with, when you have the wrong people in office, they create division, when you have the right people in office, they create unity and healing and, and, healing and you know, new opportunities and I feel like that's what they always been needing, mm -hmm. even at the very beginning, but the greed and the jealousy and all the yes. I want this and that was taking place and yeah, it was kind of separate, was separating people. Yeah, like, and... Kind of, and... Obviously, we haven't gotten into governments around the country. Yeah. We, we don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Because we deal with enough here. Okay. We don't need to get into that. But um, I feel like when new people come into office, uh -oh. regardless where they are, you know, and I know every in a democracy, I feel like we should just focus on the advancement of the people. We tired of dealing with the Fuck the. I wasn't gonna curse. I really wasn't. I was gonna say we're tired of dealing with just the this. Just it's a lot of this. back and forth. It's yes. like two dogs on the chain right. that just never get off. And, and look at the people. We <laughs> never people get off. Just waiting. Yeah, we're like just we, waiting. We got a whole lot of ideas, and we vote, and we do all this other stuff. Right. We go to these panels. We talk. We speak. Can we get better? I feel like that's all we need is to just to get better. And I was going to say something, but that's political. Y'all know we don't do that over here. So keep going. Keep mm, going. Okay. But I really wasn't going to curse. I don't curse. Nah, she doesn't. Now, yeah. I do say, like, you know, the little small expressions. Did you, you be saying some of the small impressions? Like, hell. That's oh, it. my God. That's it. But I don't curse. I didn't do that. Anyway. Nation's <laughs> Dutch influence, while the black, green, and gold elements mirror the colors of the ANC. Number 37. When it was first adopted in 1994, South Africa's flag was the first flag without extra elements, like a seal, to incorporate six colours. Mm. Number 38. The World Bank classifies South Africa as an upper-middle income economy, and its economy is the second largest in Africa behind only Nigeria. Number 39. South Africa is part of BRICS. No, not those BRICS as an acronym referring to an association of the top five main emerging world economies, yeah. consisting of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. BRICS no. represents roughly 42% of the world's population, or about 3.1 billion people, which is a large amount of people. Fact. Number 40. However, poverty and inequality remain widespread throughout South Africa, with about a quarter of the population unemployed and living on less than one US dollar and 25 cents a day. Indeed, mm. in 2019, South Africa had the world's highest level of income inequality, according to the World Bank. Okay. Number 41. South Africa is the only nation in history to have built and then dismantled its nuclear weapons program in the name of world peace. Good job, South Africa. It's a shame people didn't follow suit. Yes, it's a shame. Bro, hey, that's a flex. It's a shame. I don't know why I felt like I heard that before. We have. We have. That's a flex. We have. We just know they so, can do it. South Africa said we could do it, though. Times 10. But we don't want y'all to do it. Yeah, we just wish other people would do the same. It's true. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> the meaning of life. 
South Africa is also a leader throughout the continent and indeed the entire planet, as in 2006, it became the first African country and the fifth country in the world to recognize same-sex marriage. Oh. Discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation was outlawed in 1996. Gay people were allowed to serve openly in the military since 1998, and same-sex couples can adopt children and have equal access to IVF and surrogacy. In contrast, homosexuality remains illegal in most other African nations, and even carries the death penalty in some areas, which is a term used conventionally in world history and archaeology to refer to Europe, Asia, and Africa. Basically everywhere except for the Americas, Australasia, and the various islands that sit in the Pacific Ocean. Specifically, the most southern mainland point in the country is Cape Agulhas, located around 109 miles southeast of Cape Town. As a result, it's also the southernmost point of the entire African continent. Pretty special. Mm. Number 44. However, the southernmost point of any part of South Africa oh, is Cape Hooker. <laughs> Oh dear. The southernmost point of Marin Island, the largest of South Africa's two Prince Edward Islands. Located in the southern Indian Ocean, Marin Island is South Africa's only sub-Antarctic territory. And knowing it to being a tiny island in the middle of nowhere, it's today a conservation area with no permanent human population. Number 45. Okay. The highest point in South Africa is atop Mafadi, one of southern Africa's tallest mountains. Mafadi sits on Lesotho's eastern border, and a whopping 11,320 feet tall. Number 46. However, arguably the most famous South African peak is Table Mountain, one of yeah, the country's yeah. most iconic landmarks owing to its stunning three-kilometer-wide level plateau. Table Mountain is also home to more than 2,200 species of plants, most of which are endemic. Number 47. South Africa is home to Jugela Falls, a beautiful cascade of water that's generally accepted to be the second highest waterfall in the world, behind only Angel Falls in Venezuela. However, there are some who believe that more accurate measurements and fair definitions of the term waterfall would actually make Jugela Falls higher than Angel Falls. But we'll leave that argument to respected scientists and Reddit blowhards. For another day. Number 48. In addition to very high waterfalls, nice. South Africa also boasts Redefort Crater, the world's largest verified impact crater. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pummeled into existence well over 2 billion years ago by a giant chunk of asteroid, which by the way was thought to be up to 15 kilometers across, the crater in South Africa's free state measured up to 300 kilometers in diameter, also known as absolutely bloody massive. Wow. Number 49. South Africa boasts a wide variety of landscapes that other countries could never. You hear me? Other countries could never, darling. South Africa has deserts, wetlands, grasslands, okay. bush, subtropical forests, mountains, and escarpments. That Here in the UK, we have hills. Some very nice hills, sure, but no deserts or rainforests. Mm. Number 50. Sure, the Come national on, flower of South Africa is the King Protea, also known Ooh, as the Giant Protea, Honeypot, or King Sugarbush, which is also my nickname in certain areas of London. Whatever name it goes by, this delightful this is flower beautiful. is widely distributed in the southwestern and yeah. southern parts of the country, and is so hashtag iconic within South Africa that the national cricket team is nicknamed the Proteas. Number 51. South Africa has a population of over 58 million people, which makes it the world's 24th most populous nation. Not the most thrilling effect, but hey, they're not all gold. Some of them are more bronze or, I don't know, zinc, tin, whatever. 58 million people in South Africa, let's move on. So Number 52. About 80% of South Africans are ethnically black Africans, mostly of Bantu ancestry, divided amongst a variety of different ethnic groups, such as the Zulu and Kosa people. The remaining non-Bantu black people are South Africa's Aboriginal people, the Khoi and the San, collectively known as the Khoi San. This is Number the 52. people you were talking about for Nelson Mandela. Yeah. And that gentleman right there looked at a little bit like... He don't look like him to me. He favoured some... Uh, a variety of Nelson different Mandela's ethnic groups, such as mm -hmm. the Zulu and Kosa people. The remaining non-Bantu black people are South Africa's Aboriginal people, the Khoi and the San, collectively known as the Khoi. You can tell me that man don't favour him a little. Yeah. I thought you was talking about the other man. No, talk about <laughs> this brother right here. This guy right yeah, here. Yeah, but like he do, he have those features to me. Yeah, yeah. And I've just never looked into what he was, you know. Yeah, it's not bad. Sam, number fifty-two. Of the remaining population, nearly 8% are white South Africans and roughly 9% are of mixed ethnic ancestry, often grouped into a category known as coloured, which I hasten I to know, remind you is a word that hasn't really been okay group. to say here in the UK for about three decades. Another 2% are ethnically Indian. Number 50. Right, usually you guys come through with a fact check on these, you know what I'm saying? Um, but 9%? I Just really 9%? thought it was bigger than that. I like, thought it was like a huge population. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hmm. Four. It's worth pointing out that these populations of ethnically European, Asian, and multiracial people are the largest such communities in the entirety of Africa. Number 55. Owing to its status as a multi-ethnic society that boasts a broad variety of cultures, languages, and religions, South Africa has not one, not two, but 11 official languages. 
The most widely spoken of these is Zulu, followed by Kosa, with the other nine being Afrikaans, Undubele, Suto, Northern Suto, Swazi, Songa, Swana, Venda, and South African English. The vast majority of South Africans speak more than one language because they're right clever clogs who like to show off. <laughs> Number 56. <laughs> Two of these languages are of European origin. The first, Afrikaans, developed from the Dutch language spoken by the Dutch people who colonised the region a few hundred years ago, and is the first language of most of South African white people. The second European language, English, reflects the country's legacy of British colonialism, and despite its frequent use in public and commercial life, is used at home by only 10% of the South African population. Number 57. Owing to the diverse mix of ethnicities, cultures and languages, South Africa is often referred to as the Rainbow Nation. Number 58. Roughly 80% of South Africans identify as Christian, the vast majority of which are members of the various Protestant denominations. The remaining 20% is made up of Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, other religions, and filthy heathens who don't have a religion. Oh my god. Number 59. According to estimates from the US government, the population of South Africa is significantly younger than many Western nations. The median age of a person in South Africa is 27, compared to 38 in the US, 40 in the UK, and 47 in both Germany and Japan. Number 60. Sadly, South Africa continues to struggle with its HIV-AIDS epidemic, as a little under 8 million people in the country are HIV-positive, more than any other nation on Earth. Even more depressingly, but perhaps not surprisingly, rates of HIV and AIDS infections divide along racial lines. In 2008, a study found that 13.6% of black South Africans were HIV-positive, compared to only 0.3% of white South Africans. Number 61. As the wonderfully rich and culturally significant nation it is, South Africa has a total of 10 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. These include places we've already mentioned, like the Cradle of Humankind and the Redefort Crater in Free State, as well as a number of other fascinating Dizzy. sites like the Babaton Makonjwa oh, Mountains in the eastern province of Mpumalanga and Robben Island, home to a now closed prison where Nelson Mandela, as well as various other political dissidents, were most country in the mainland of the Old World, which is a term used conventionally in world history and archaeology to refer to Europe, Asia and Africa, basically everywhere except for the Americas, Australasia and the various islands that sit in the Pacific Ocean. Specifically, the most southern mainland point in the country is Cape Agulhas, located around 109 miles southeast of Cape Town. As a result, it's also the southernmost point of the entire African continent. Pretty mm. special. Number 44. However, the southernmost point of any part of South Africa is Cape Hooker. <laughs> Oh dear. The southernmost point of Marin Island, the largest of South Africa's two Prince Edward Islands. Located in the southern Indian Ocean, Marin Island is South Africa's only sub-Antarctic territory. And knowing it to being a tiny island in the middle of nowhere, it's today a conservation area with no permanent human population. Number 45. Okay. The highest point in South Africa is atop Mafadi, one of southern Africa's tallest mountains. Mafadi sits on Lesotho's eastern border, at a whopping 11,320 feet tall. Number 46. However, arguably the most famous South African peak is Table Mountain, one of the yeah. country's most iconic landmarks owing to its stunning 3 kilometer wide level plateau. Table Mountain is also home to more than 2,200 species of plants, most of which are endemic. Number 47. South Africa is home to Dugela Falls, a beautiful cascade of water that's generally accepted to be the second highest waterfall in the world, behind only Angel Falls in Venezuela. However, there are some who believe that more accurate measurements and fair definitions of the term waterfall would actually make Tugela Falls higher than Angel Falls. But we'll leave that argument to respected scientists and Reddit blowhards. For another day. Number 48. In addition to very high waterfalls, nice. South Africa also boasts Redefort Crater, the world's largest verified impact crater. Oh, yeah, yeah, Pummeled into right. existence well over 2 billion years ago by a giant chunk of asteroid, which by the way was thought to be up to 15 kilometers across, the crater in South Africa's free state measures up to 300 kilometers in diameter, also known as absolutely bloody massive. Wow. Number 49. South Africa boasts a wide variety of landscapes that other countries could never. You hear me? Other countries could never, darling. South Africa has deserts, wetlands, grasslands, bush, subtropical forests, mountains, and escarpments. Here in the UK, we have hills. Some very nice hills, sure, but no deserts or rainforests. Hmm. Number 50. The national flower of South Africa is the King Protea, also known as the Giant Protea, Honeypot, or King Sugarbush, which is also my nickname in certain areas of London. Whatever name it goes by, the delightful flower is widely distributed in the southwestern and southern parts of the country, and is so hashtag iconic within South Africa that the national cricket team is nicknamed the Proteas. Number 51. South Africa has a population of over 58 million people, which makes it the world's 24th most populous nation. Not the most thrilling effect, but hey, they're not all gold. Some of them are more bronze or, I don't know, zinc, tin, whatever. 58 million people in South Africa, let's move on. Number 52. 
About 80% of South Africans are ethnically black Africans, mostly of Bantu ancestry, divided amongst a variety of different ethnic groups, such as the Zulu and Kosa people. The remaining non-Bantu black people are South Africa's Aboriginal people, the Khoi and the San, collectively known as the Khoi San. This Number is the 52. people you were talking about for Nelson Mandela. Yeah. And that gentleman right there looked at a little bit like... He do look like him to me. He favoured some... Uh, a variety favored of Nelson different Mandela ethnic groups, such as mm. the Zulu and Kosa people. The remaining non-Bantu black people are South Africa's Aboriginal people, the Khoi and the San, collectively that. known as the Khoi. You can tell me that man don't favour him a little. Yeah. I thought you was talking about the other man. No, talk about <laughs> this brother right here. This guy right yeah, here. Yeah, but like he do, he have those features to me. Yeah, yeah. And I've just never looked into what he was, you know. Yeah, it's not bad. San, number fifty-two. Of the remaining population, nearly 8% are white South Africans and roughly 9% are of mixed ethnic ancestry, often grouped into a category known as coloured, which I hasten I to remind you is a word that hasn't really been okay group. to say here in the UK for about three decades. Another 2% are ethnically Indian. Number 50. Right, usually you guys come through with a fact check on these, you know what I'm saying? Um, But 9%? I Just really 9 thought percent? it was bigger than that. I like, thought it was like a huge population. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hmm. Four. It's worth pointing out that these populations of ethnically European, Asian, and multiracial people are the largest such communities in the entirety of Africa. Number 55. Owing to its status as a multi-ethnic society that boasts a broad variety of cultures, languages, and religions, South Africa has not one, not two, but 11 official languages. The most widely spoken of these is Zulu, followed by Kosa, with the other nine being Afrikaans, Undubele, Suto, Northern Suto, Swazi, Songa, Swana, Venda, and South African English. The vast majority of South Africans speak more than one language because they're right clever clogs who like to show off. <laughs> Number 56. Two of these languages are of European origin. The first, Afrikaans, developed from the Dutch language spoken by the Dutch people who colonised the region a few hundred years ago, and is the first language of most of South African white people. The second European language, English, reflects the country's legacy of British colonialism, and despite its frequent use in public and commercial life, is used at home by only 10% of the South African population. Number 57. Owing to the diverse mix of ethnicities, cultures, and languages, South Africa is often referred to as the Rainbow Nation. Number 58. Roughly 80% of South Africans identify as Christian, the vast majority of which are members of the various Protestant denominations. The remaining 20% is made up of Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, other religions, and filthy heathens who don't have a religion. Oh my god. Number 59. According to estimates from the US government, the population of South Africa is significantly younger than many Western nations. The median age of a person in South Africa is 27, compared to 38 in the US, 40 in the UK, and 47 in both Germany and Japan. Number 60. Sadly, South Africa continues to struggle with its HIV AIDS epidemic, as a little under 8 million people in the country are HIV positive, more than any other nation on Earth. Even more depressingly, but perhaps not surprisingly, rates of HIV and AIDS infections divide along racial lines. In 2008, a study found that 13.6% of black South Africans were HIV positive, compared to only 0.3% of white South Africans. Number 61. As the wonderfully rich and culturally significant nation it is, South Africa has a total of 10 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. These include places we've already mentioned, like the Cradle of Humankind and the Vredefort Crater in Free State, as well as a number of other fascinating sites like the Babaton Makonjwa Mountains in the eastern province of Mpumalanga and Robben Island, home to a now closed prison where Nelson Mandela, as well as various other political dis were imprisoned Ooh, during. Lord, I just had to pause for a sec, because Lord, that was too many stops they were just had going yeah. real fast and all that. South was... Africa got a lot going up. A lot, bro. Like, like the climate Ooh. is just like the people. It's mm. a lot. And yeah, he had Nelson all over on that <laughs> island. He, he had to make that mention. Yes, yeah, South Africa created the word diversity. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still stuck on the part about him yeah. talking about the the man's majority yeah. is black. And now he said 9% Nine is, colored, is colored and then another lower percent is white. Yeah. But then the what most... A, what a gap set. And then he he back those and speaks about how... Uh-oh. You going to some Google? I am. Then you back those and speaks about how to, they got all these languages, but the most one that's taught is what, Afrikaans? And ain't, no, they no? say Zulu. 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 Okay, boom, boom, boom. Afrikaans is like number nine or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, are we waiting? Yeah. Oh, let me see. Let me, let me see something. Hold on. Let's see. Depends on how they give it to us. Okay. Okay. So, black South Africans is at 80%. This 80 is 2019. White South Africans is at 79 Colors is at 8.8. .8. It increased okay, it. Okay, so it's 80% then. It increased it. 
That this was in is, 2019. Yeah, the one he just what mentioned was old, like, yeah. And that's Wikipedia. You know, you, you could uh, edit things on Wikipedia. Hold mm, on. Mm, Wait, mm. one minute. Hold on. Let's see. Okay, so 2019, this is South Africa website. Yeah. 79.2% is black. Okay. Colored and white people each 8.9%. Okay. Indian or Asian 25 and the rest is other. How much is the other percent? The colored? Oh, I gotta go to the website. I gotta we go we to the we website. gonna do this. We gonna do this another yeah, day. We gonna do this another yeah. day. But it sounds like the numbers went down. It, it went. Yeah, it's more. 20, so, so people was having babies. People had some more babies. Mm. You know. Era of apartheid. Number sixty-two. South Africa is extremely rich in valuable minerals. Sure and you is. know what they say, a platinum in the hand is worth two platinums in... Okay, I'm going to level with you. I literally don't know enough about platinum, except, you know, the vintage PlayStation games, to continue this fact. So let's just move along. Come now. Number 63. In addition to all that shiny and presumably very useful platinum, South Africa is also one of the world's top producers of everyone's favourite yellowish metal, Gold. Having been the world's top gold producing nation by far throughout the late 60s and early 70s, South Africa's gold output has since suffered a sharp decline, and by the end of the 2010s, the country had dropped down several places in these gold rankings, with China emerging as the world's golden boy of gold. Nintendo 64. Still no nation, not even China, has even come close to ever matching South Africa's prodigious gold harvest during its peak production. In 1970, South African mines were responsible for producing 70% of the global total of gold. And no one can ever take that away from you, South Africa. You remember that. Or is mining still as dangerous as it was back in the day? Like, see, I know uh, we have more technology and stuff that can, you know, yeah. ease the job a little more and get you in the tunnels deeper, quicker, before you have to do all the extra work yourself, so you got machinery for it. Yeah, but, you know, the... I don't know exactly. The material is still getting in your, you know, your streams. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. also, just a couple of years ago, we had some that collapsed here while the people are in there. I must have missed you know? that. Like, when we go to the little um, excursions that we go to mm -hmm. and we go in the cave and all that, going in the cave was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me because I'm not I re going Yeah, there. I remember. It was I'm hot. I can't there. tell you how slippery. deep in the... Earth we went, but it was it was deep. And slippery. Yeah. I ain't going no more. That was I just wanted to experience it one time. That's it. Mm. Don't need to experience it again. <laughs> <laughs> until they produce more gold. But until then, you remember it. Number 65. South Africa is also a great place to find a girl's best friend. No, not Jessica, your loyal BFF of several years with whom you've shared many treasured memories. I'm talking about diamonds, baby. The world's leading diamond company, De Beers, was set up in Kimberley, South Africa by the very, very racist English colonizer Cecil Rhodes in 1881. And today, the company operates all over the world and sells more than a third of the world's rough diamonds. Today, South Africa remains one of the top 10 diamond producing countries on Earth. Number 66. In fact, the old essay takes credit for producing the world's largest known diamond, which was discovered in 1905 at the premier mine in Pretoria. Named the Cullinan wow. Diamond after Sir Thomas Cullinan, the owner of the mine in which I it was found, the large diamond. chunk of neatly arranged carbon atoms weighed in at 3,106.75 carats and was roughly the size of a medium-sized apple. Ooh, Number 67. Imagine. The rough diamond was eventually gifted Girl. to King Edward VII as a token of the loyalty and attachment of the people of Transvaal to his throne in person. <laughs> okay. And sent from South Africa to England. Owing to its oh, immense yeah. value, the diamond was ceremoniously locked in the captain's safe and heavily guarded for the entire journey. Except it wasn't because it was a decoy. And the real stone was literally just sent via post in a plain, unremarkable box. Now that's some serious sneak right there. Number 68. The rough Cullinan diamond was eventually cut into nine large, important zones and 96 other far smaller ones. The two of these, known as the Great Star of Africa and the Second Star of Africa, or less ceremoniously known as Cullinan 1 and 2, are today set in the British Crown Jewels. The 530.2 carat Great Star of Africa is set at the top of the Sovereign Scepter with the Cross, and to this day remains the largest clear-cut diamond in the world. The 317.4 carat Second Star of Africa is set at the front of the Imperial State Crown, the Queen's go-to crown for things like opening Parliament and whatnot. Number 69. Ooh, that is beautiful, oh, yeah. man. The iconic South African anti-apartheid revolutionary and president, Nelson Mandela, is known by several different names in South Africa. At birth, he was named Holy Halaha, but was given the name Nelson on his first day of school because it was often easier for the English colonials to rename native black children than to learn how to correctly pronounce their real names. You know what? That's crazy. And, and this, this doesn't relate exactly to that, but stop doing it. Hmm. Stop naming people what you want them to be named. That's why every time 
we greet y'all. We try our best to get y'all names. Now, yeah, we y'all know sound it. funny. Yeah. But I don't like that. Like, I just feel like that's just so disrespectful. And y'all know, we've talked about it before with our son's name. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that. Don't rename my child. Mm. Okay? <laughs> you you get better at your pronunciation. We get better at it with ours as well. I feel like we'll sit yeah. down with you and we'll get the whole name. Because I know in Africa, names are long. Yeah. And yeah. In South Africa, you got the clicks. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and it's coming from me, who mispronounces everything. But still, number 17. When Mandela was 16, he was given the name of Dalabunga Why after like going Ali? through the traditional codes of rite of passage wow. into manhood. And in later years, South Africans commonly refer to him as Madiba, which is the name of the Tembu clan to which he belongs. Or simply Tata Okulu, the which are the Kosa words for father the... and the traditional codes of rite of passage into manhood. And in later years, South Africans commonly refer to him as Madiba, which is the name of the Tembu clan to which he belongs. Tembu. Or simply Tata Okulu, which are the Kosa words for father and grandfather. Oh, so is he Kosa? Is the Timbu is Kosa? Is is a Kosa? Is that uh, related to the Ko- Koi sign? <laughs> they hear you. It's, <laughs> it's all like you wait for a response. <laughs> I am. I you am. You wait for replies. Like, I is am. it? Is it? <laughs> You know how I be thinking and I be answering myself sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. that, was too, that was too cute. Okay. Number 71. Let's get it. One of South Africa's most celebrated beverages is Roybus tea. Though yeah. viewers in Great Britain oh, yeah, may know it as this. Red Bush tea. Sounds like a nasty infection, but it's the literal translation of Roybus from Afrikaans. Roybus tea is made from the Roybus plant, also known as Aspalathus linaris, which is endemic to a small part of the western coast of the Western Cape province of South Africa. As such, Roybus tea is actually not a true tea at all, as it doesn't even come from the tea plant, though the rooibos tea is prepared and consumed like tea. Incidentally, rooibos tea is naturally caffeine free, so feel free to drink it into the wee hours if you uh, see fit. I need, I need the Number 72. Next. Cream soda, the most popular soft drink generally flavoured with vanilla, has a different colour and flavour for almost every country. In South Africa, creme soda has a rosy floral taste, is green in colour, and is also widely known as green ambulance or creme soba, based on the dubious belief it's believed to alleviate the symptoms of a hangover. Number 73. But for the each national country? animal of South Africa is different the adorable color? springbok. Which why, happens hey, 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 so why is it for each country is a different color for the cream soda? I mean, that's unique. ours is like a brown and a cream color. like a. But tan. I mean, you got to think about the thought process here. They say we can't have the same color twice. And know. it's a different color for each country. But they, they just say that you have symptoms like a hangover. I believe so. It's green. I believe so. That's different. That's, yeah. That's very different be the only Southern African gazelle. The springbok is so loved in South Africa that not only is it the national animal, it's also the emblem and nickname of the South African national rugby team. Oh, we heard Number 74. Mm-hmm. South Africa is also notable in that it's home to many of the largest, tallest and fastest animals on Earth. In South Africa, one can find elephants, the largest land mammal, whale sharks, the largest fish, ostriches, the largest birds, giraffes, the tallest animal, and cheetahs, the fastest land mammal. Yeah. It's a nation of snooty, overachieving animals who are the best South and know it. Just got it right. Number 75. Oh, yeah. The animal madness continues with South Africa's sardine run, in which millions of sardines travel in vast shimmering shoals from the cold waters off South Africa's coast near Cape Point, up to the coastlines of the northern eastern Cape and southern Kazulu Natal. The phenomenon, which occurs between May and July, sees the formation of 40 meter deep shoals that stretch up to 15 in kilometers in length and 3.5 <laughs> oh, kilometers in width. It's so big they can even be seen from space. Hey, so let me know. I, so we know that sardines most likely are like they they migrate, they moving. So this is a time where they do the sardine run. Let me know if you guys do that. Like if y'all like to go and participate in a sardine run and just rack why, up. Why would they participate in a sardine run, babe? Why would they to get some fish? Oh, to get some fish. I'm thinking you talk about getting the water with the sardines. No, it's to eat the fish. Oh, they go. They, like look at look at all this. Look at all this fish. I'm not a fan of sardines at all. I like catfish. You know why? Because we had to eat it when we were younger. Yeah, some dishes is yeah. just yeah. Eat, eat, eat. I don't want it no more. Little snack <laughs> I don't in the, want it no more. Little snack in that little small little tin can. Mm. Go get you some sardines. I don't mm. want to. Get some crackers. <laughs> Struggle. Number seventy six. <laughs> Speaking of animals, the Boulders Beach in Cape Town is home to some pretty odd ones, which leads a lot of tourists there. Which ones are here, you ask? Why, the African penguin. They were said to have settled there in 1982, which is pretty recently when you think about it. And it's said there's thought to be about two to three thousand of the flappy chaps living there. Number 77. Speaking again of animals, well, yeah, kinda. Dinosaurs. 
Specifically, if you want old, dead versions of dinosaurs, otherwise known as fossils. The Karoo yeah. region, located in the Western Cape, is like a Willy Wonka chocolate factory for dino bones. Specifically, in a group of rocks known as the Karoo Supergroup. Number 78. South Africa has an accolade that it only shares with the UK. Wanna guess? Nope, nothing to do with tea, and I find that frankly offensive. No, they're the only two countries that have hosted the World Cups of football, oh. cricket, and rugby in 2010, 2003, and Are 1995, respectively. <laughs> Number 79. However, an accolade South Africa does have all on its own is the world's largest bicycle race. Yeah, Ooh. seriously, Freddie Mercury would have had a field day. 35,000 races take place in the Cape Town Wait Cycle Tour every year, which takes place... You were talking about the largest, but we already know a country who who love their bikes. Oh, yeah, we do. Netherlands? Oh, yeah. Y'all yeah, have bikes. competition. <laughs> what y'all gonna do about it? Okay. You want to cycle, take a little trip to South <laughs> Africa. Look, participate. They got yeah. the world's largest race right here. Yeah. And y'all got like a whole garage for the bikes for free. Just right. like this. Park there. The name brands and everything. Y'all was schooling us about all the bike prices and all. Got the best highs in the world, y'all say. Across <laughs> 68 miles over a huge mountainous road known as Chapman's Peak Drive. Number 80. Another world first happened in South Africa too. The first ever successful heart transplant. Mm. On the 3rd okay, of December yeah. 1967, Dr. Christian Bernard successfully carried out the operation. We owe South Africa a lot in terms of the field of medicine as it happens, as the CAT scan was developed by a South African physicist called Alan Cormack, alongside wow. his British colleague Godfrey Hounsfield. Cheers, gang. Number 81. Genius. Speaking of cargo, oh, come on, taking one heart and putting it inside someone else, that's kind of cargo, right? The Durban Harbour in South Africa is absolutely massive, impressively so. There are more than 58 berths there, though not of children, of ships. Good job too, because over 30 million tons of cargo is shifted each year, apparently responsible for around 60% of imports and exports in the country. Number 82. The Comrades Marathon also happens annually between Durban and Pietermaritzburg, over 55 whole miles. The 20,000 sore leggy people have 12 hours to complete the race in the middle of June. It's the biggest and oldest one-day marathon in the world too, so stick that in your pipe. Number 83. Remember earlier when I said we owe South Africa a lot for medical marvels? Turns out the same is true for, uh, swimming pool hygiene. Ferdinand Chauvier invented the swimming pool vacuum cleaner called the Creepy Crawly in 1974. Thanks, yeah. man. If I ever own a pool, I have you to thank for it being... Oh, who am I kidding? I'll be lucky if I ever own a house. <laughs> Hashtag millennial. <laughs> Number 84. God, do you love trains? You I do. No, no, he didn't just throw a shot at being a millennial. Being a millennial, no, you know what? When you think about Whoa, it, we, we we are the generation that was that's a in between generation. Whoa, wait, and whoa! Not lot. him and you throwing a shot at and millennials. A whole lot. Millennials are doing well. We are doing well, but I'm saying, being a millennial, we go through a lot. We go through a lot. We are the like throughout life. The go through babies. Like we are the ones who were stuck between two generations, and it, it get crazy at times. But um. Don't don't be trying to shave millennials. We get homes, okay? Lord. Show. Well, How okay, no, I like them. I don't love them. Like some kind of anorak nerd. Well, South Africa is home to one of the nicest locomotives around, the Rovos trains. These wood paneled beauties can have 72 passengers and have suites that can occupy half a carriage Ooh, with full size bathrooms and a double bed. They look far nicer than oh, these no, stock image like bits that. we've been using, let me tell you. No, we're happy. Number 85. Okay. South Africa also boasts the Palace of the Lost City, which is not a rip-off Indiana Jones film, but the biggest themed resort hotel in the world. It can be That's found tight. in Sun City, surrounded by its 25-hectare man-made jungle with nearly 2 million plants and trees. Any of a chance of a stay, I say? <laughs> Please? <laughs> Please? Number 86. Car, look at this Hummer H3. Do you live outside America and want to help get one built? Well, too bad. They're not made anywhere except in the US or South Africa. Oh, yeah, wow. there's a plot twist. To liven that fact up somehow. Number 87. Villa Carthy Street in Soweto is a big deal and probably has incredibly high house prices too. Why? Well, two Nobel Peace Prize winners have lived there Nelson Mandela and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Okay, okay. Number 88. Grace Michelle is the first and, so far as we can tell, only woman who has been the first lady of two separate countries at two different times Mozambique and South Africa. Well, well done, huh? Do you say well done? For Number 89. Wow. Wait, I don't know. So I feel like I feel like she was the first lady that he mentioned on this channel today. Yeah. That did something, and what a remarkable way of being noticed! Like All right, so two was she countries married at to one. Two men? Oh lord! Oh lord! 
I mean, I wish you would have elaborated. I didn't know. Married the two men at one time. Not at one time. How did he say at one time? Nah, did you, who said that? Me? Oh, <clears throat> well, look, he done confused us. So she was president. No, first lady. First lady. Oh, snap. Interesting. Hmm. You guys. Whoa. Yeah, we're seeing. So it's, yeah. <laughs> In South Africa, cows mean business. So much so, there's even an Android app for it. Well, kind of. It has a more specific purpose. So Lobola is able to calculate, based on a number of factors, how many live cows you must give to your future wife's family oh, yeah, as a yeah, dowry. Yeah, yeah. dowry. There really the is dowry. an app for everything. Now, how many cows must I rustle for Jennifer? Oh, that's about three too many. Number 90. In Mojay Kloof, there is a huge tree, the biggest of its kind in fact, known as the Sunland Big Baobab Tree. It's 6,000 years old, and so the people who own the land around it decided to do the right thing. Turn the inside of it into a bar. It looks pretty small, but it can accommodate 15 people apparently, but a pint there is cheaper than in London. Ugh. Number 91. Remember way back ages in this video when we were talking about some tools that were found in a cave? Well, some modern day sand people from South Africa still use those same tools to craft and hunt. That's right, those same tools, the 44,000 year old tools. Number 92. In 1986, in the Scottish city of Glasgow, the street within which the South African consulate was placed was renamed from St George's Place to Nelson Mandela Place. This was done during apartheid, and was done so that officials would always have to see his name and be reminded of their political prisoner. Mandela thanked the city years later. Number 93. See, the effects of apartheid and segregation are still being felt in South Africa to this day. For instance, white people own 72% of the country's arable farmland. That's despite the fact that they are only about 8% of the population. Number 94. It's worth noting, by the way, that the CIA played a part in jailing Mandela for 27 years. They were the ones that told the South African government his location, leading directly to his imprisonment. This, in fact, only came to light just a few years ago in 2016. Number 95. I think, uh... Speaking of apartheid, that I think the question I had earlier about why he was a threat, they, they answered it. Don't worry about it. You want to film me in later? About him being a terror to the U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 There were different rules for people who weren't white or black. For example, people from the Philippines were classified as black, but the Chinese were considered non-white. For political reasons, Japanese, Taiwanese, and Koreans were dubbed honorary whites. Oh, what a horrible system that was. Why couldn't yeah. they have just all we been know, dubbed like... human, eh? <sighs> Number 96. Okay. Perhaps most horrifically, the apartheid government had a project called Project Coast, spearheaded by an absolute bell named Wuta Basom, nicknamed Dr. Death. The aim of this project was to develop a bacteria which would kill black people, as well as vaccines which would render black women infertile. Number 97. Okay, imagine you're in... See, I knew people would be put in position by certain people to do certain things for certain reasons. I, 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 don't, play, I, I don't see why. That's like... The vaccines that we had here, one for example, the syphilis project. They put they that yeah they put in a position to do these things. Um, that <sighs> yo, it's, like That's if you genocide. think about it, yeah, and if you think about it from the apartheid to how things are, there's always something they want to put in play to still try to have control. At the end of the day, if you ask me. Hmm. We can get a little deep on this, but we're and not. And I know, and this is why when people say things like, oh, slavery was so long ago, get over it. The effects of slavery on black people still exist. The projects. The continuation. It may not be slavery, but the continuation of oppression to... Do wipe what, us yeah. out. Yeah, wipe us out, basically. <laughs> Make sure we have the bare minimum. It's still there. From what I seen earlier, he made a mention about how whites have the most farming. Yeah. Uh, and, land, and they're right? the least... Um, but they're the least populated? Yeah. And I, I, I just don't like... Like, yeah, that's, that's not... Like, equal. how is that even a thing? Like, <laughs> It's not equal at all. It's not equal. Um, but... Man, oh, I hate... But a lot of people has rose up and have risen, yes, right? And yes. they have made great names for themselves and did mm -hmm. great things and made something out of nothing. So Despite the oppression. And that's I how love it's, that yeah. for my people. That's how, I love that's how that. it is. Modern day South Africa. Looks lovely, right? And hey, look, now you found a meteorite. That meteorite is now yours, right? 
Nope. Sadly, no finders keepers for you. Anything like this must be handed over to the authorities due to the National Heritage Law. Sorry. Number 98. Hey, meat yours. lovers, just so you're aware, if you go to South Africa, barbecues are called the braai. Right. They will put anything and everything on this damn braai too. Over an actual fire and everything. Oh, I'm hungry now. Number 99. In response to the severe rates of violent crime in South Africa towards the end of the 20th century, in 1998, a South African inventor by the name of Charles Forey devised an ingenious method of preventing carjackings, which he dubbed the blaster. His invention worked by equipping the underside of a vehicle with literal flamethrowers, which threatened motorists could activate at the flip of a switch to direct huge plumes of flames at the potential carjackers. Though controversial, the blaster was staggeringly never banned, and a small number of cars in South Africa are still driving around completely legally with complete actual oh, mother chuffing that... flamethrowers. That's yeah, hardcore. Play if you will. Damn. Oh, well. Number mm. 100. Uh. We can't talk about SA without mentioning Sixto Rodriguez. Now, he's actually from the US and was a musician in the 1970s with very little success. So much so he quit and became a demolition worker. But little did he know he was extremely popular in South Africa, oh, eventually wow. doing some tours there. This was the focus of the award-winning documentary film Searching for Sugar Man. Mm. Number 101. There are absolutely loads of shipwrecks off the coast of South Africa. Like, really? a lot. It's estimated to be between two to 3,000 shipwrecks along the coastline. Wow. But they cannot be touched as they are protected by law. So, no hidden treasure for you, I'm afraid. So that there was 101 facts about South Africa. What a ride it was. But it now I do want to touch on the artist and how he has so much love in South Africa. South Africans, man, yeah. the love. What do y'all call it? The Umbutu? Umbutu? Umbuntu? I forgot. But oh. the love that y'all have for people, us, <clears throat> is felt. Okay? It is. Truly it is, yeah. Y'all could, could do a lot. Y'all can do a lot. Like, for real, y'all can they, change the world. They change, his, they change his man's life around because yeah. he gave up. Right. And wanted to go do another career choice, but he came back to it because of the love, so he did a whole tour out there. He's like, yeah. hold on, y'all feeling me? Let me do a tour. Put Look them back that. up. Put Look them back on the charts. Look at that. We planning a trip very <laughs> soon. <laughs> right, right. But who says that's going to be our only trip? Oh, no, we got okay. big plans. We got big things right. happening. All right. Big things popping. All right. <laughs> yeah. This was a lot. <laughs> I think we have commented throughout. So, yeah. yeah. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks if you like to support the channel that way, as well as our reaction request form is in our description box below. We'll see y'all soon. Peace. Peace.